SpaceX Starlink's AI Overlord. Shall we play Space War? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Fireside. So good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, all kinds of great stuff. AI. Today is actually an AI day. We're going to be talking about uh, Starlink and AI, a combination. There was something that just happened where there is a, let's say, a new means of monitoring satellites and the cadence, let's say, of these satellite launches, rocket launches, and all the rest of this stuff. They are upgrading the infrastructure. $4 billion upgrade at that. And it just reminds me of the old 1983 movie War Games when they said, you know what? We need to take the men out of the loop. Those men with those little shiny keys that either turn the key or don't turn the key. In other words, launch the missiles or don't. We need to replace those with silicone diodes, basically AI. <sighs> It's a little bit scary to me. So today, not only am I going to give you my thoughts on it, as I always do, my commentary, but I want to know what you think about this. I'm a little bit leery. I love AI. I think it's great, but I think that it needs to be reeled in a little bit. It's going to exponentially grow as time goes on. And the question is, are there safeguards put into place to prevent that growth from turning into something that we don't want to see? Like extinction. <laughs> Something like that. So I'm going to go through an article that I was reading, actually two articles that I kind of piecemealed together. I'll give you this information. And of course, I'll give you my commentary. But down below, I want to hear from you. What do you think about all of this? If you don't want to put something down there, I get it. Some people are just shy. Put an emoji down here. Put a poop emoji. Put a rocket. I don't know. Whatever you want, put something down there so that I know that you actually watch the video. That's very helpful. If you enjoy the video, throw it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, throw it a thumbs down. YouTube likes it either way. Trust me, it doesn't matter, but I would like your interaction. Give it a thumbs up. That'd be kind of good. Also, if you have not subscribed yet, consider doing so. If you have, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this little notification button over here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And that's what YouTube says. Do they do it? No. YouTube, do it. If you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thanks button down here. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. And there's another 1,500 or 2,000 or some crazy amount that you can watch of mine when you're done watching this video. Talking about videos, I put together a SpaceX Starlink playlist just for you. There's a lot of people here for SpaceX Starlink. So check that out. I'll put a link over here. It's a bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it, because this channel is always about the why. There's about 550 videos that I've put together in the last 51 months for you. <laughs> Don't click on it yet. Wait until you're done watching this video and then check that out. And if you haven't picked up any of my merch as of yet, why the heck not? Go check it out. We have like megabit hats. We have shirts. We have an IFTX or IFT10. That launch is happening like in a week or something. It's a shirt that commemorates the IFT10 being close to the end of the block two line. Now we're going to be moving into block three very soon. Anyways, check it out. Go to jcristina.com forward slash shop. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash shop. So now that all of the promotion is done, I appreciate you sticking around. <laughs> Let's get right into this article. It starts out by saying a $4 billion bet on space power infrastructure. The U.S. Space Force has just awarded a $4 billion contract to Amentum and Jacobs Technology to overhaul America's entire space launch range infrastructure. This isn't just a budget line item. It's a statement that space is now a mission critical infrastructure. Absolutely. Upgrading the front line of launch. From Cape Canaveral to Vandenberg Air Force Base, the plan includes modernizing radar systems, tracking sensors, telemetry arrays, and cybersecurity defenses. They aim to overhaul legacy systems built in the Cold War era, bringing them into the 21st century with an AI-driven launch environment, including faster software, automation, and increased network security a future of multi-launch, multi-user operations. 
with companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and ULA ramping up launch cadence, the Space Force needs a launch range that can handle rapid overlapping missions. The contract supports a shift to multi-user spaceports, where commercial and government vehicles can launch quickly and safely one after another. Think of it as turning a slow single-lane road into a multi-lane expressway. Why it matters. Space traffic is exploding. Starlink alone is adding thousands of new next-generation satellites and deep space probes and national security payloads are launching more frequently. Older infrastructures simply can't keep up. The space race is on. A faster, smarter launch range won't just boost mission cadence. It could be the difference between having the capabilities we need on time or being edged out by our adversaries. Building with security in mind. This upgrade program isn't just hardware. It includes airtight cybersecurity protections. With ground systems now a prime target, the contract mandates secure designs from the start, protecting not just launches, but sensitive data and control networks that could be weaponized in a conflict. That is a really important statement could be weaponized in a conflict. And they are a target. Very, very important. What this means for space power. This is the infrastructure foundation under SpaceX's mega constellation, Blue Origin's rocket fleet, and NASA's Artemis deep space ambitions. It brings launch range into the digital age and underlines how vital government infrastructure partnerships are for maintaining America's edge in space. So I think that this is interesting and I like that they're playing it off as everything is copacetic and they're doing everything that they can to add in the security that they need. They're bringing everything into the digital age as they call it. But the problem with this is, is it reminds me of that movie War Games from, what is it, 1983 with Matthew Broadway. And he was the protagonist in it and he was hacking into the Whopper. Shall we play a game? The Whopper, or the War Operation Planned Response, was a supercomputer of the 80s in the movie. And what it would do is it would play a series of war games. It would analyze our attacks to the opponent, or let's say Russia's attack, and it would go back and forth from ICBMs, from subs, to troop movements, to counting the dead. And it would figure out if there was a means of winning let's say, a global thermal nuclear war. And the bottom line was there really wasn't a winner. And we'll get into that in just a second. This feels very much so the same type of scenario. They're trying to now move everything digital and allow AI to figure out where everything is. Satellite placements, trajectories. Is there something that is out of place? Is there going to be a collision? And doing all this in a millisecond type of setting where we can't do it as fast as AI can, they're kind of moving it to AI. But now how much of that is now going to be driven by AI and how much of it is going to have to be supervised? What happens to us? Are we just simply becoming operators and not actually people that are facilitating things? and basically allowing the computers to operate or facilitate everything. That's when things start going south. So I wrote down a couple of ideas that I had here, a little bit darker, but I just wanna get your thoughts on them. You know, what if this is a system that now moves so it's completely digital and AI is running the whole thing? Won't this become a single point of failure? If a hacker or some type of nefarious actor gets control over this, can they compromise the entire backbone and delay missions or possibly reroute rockets or even trigger some type of self-destruct on any of these satellites or rockets or anything? Is that a possibility? Another thing that I was thinking about is machine escalations. Machines will escalate. That's just what they do. They do not have feelings. They do not have fear. They do not have any type of self-preservation unless they're programmed to have. So 
they just look at things as ones and zeros. It would be very easy for a false positive to go out there. And now all of a sudden there is like a launch warning. And now we are escalating and we're moving from DEF CON 3 to DEF CON 4, DEF CON 4 to 5, so on and so forth. And now we're escalating our military, our Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. The adversaries see that. What do they do? They escalate. They bring their defense posture up too. And this is just basically on a warning that happened that was a false positive. This is the kind of stuff that can happen if we just simply leave it to AI. The other thing that I was thinking about is the loss of human overrides. Like I was telling you before, in the movie, there was this thing that they were talking about. Listen, we need to take the men out of the loop and we need to replace those little brass keys with a silicon diode. Well, silicon diodes, once again, they do not have feelings. So those silicon diodes at some point can make a mistake. And if they do make a mistake, they can launch. And in the movie, there's no one left in the silos to be able to pull the plug and stop the missiles from launching. The same thing holds true here. What are the safeguards? I know when I've been doing research on AI for a long time, there is so many billions and billions of dollars being put into AI and such a minuscule, about 7%, I think, less than 10% of those billions of dollars are put into safeguarding AI. That is a big thing. I would like to see 60% being put into safeguarding and 40% into the rest, but they aren't doing that. They're doing like 90 plus percent balls to the wall, as they say, right? With very, very small amount of money being put into safeguarding. So that is a major problem. Now, there could be a nightmare scenario that could possibly happen where you have a foreign hacker or rogue AI that embeds itself and now paralyzes your launch range. That's okay, but how about if things got even worse and now it fools military launch computers into a phantom strike, something going on or phantom targets coming in and now elevating posture or even launching a strike to a phantom target, not even a real target that poses no imminent threat. You know, ground arsenal is another thing that we have to think about. And if you coordinate a cyber attack to freeze the AI on those locations or at those locations, the U.S. will be unable to rapidly deploy satellites or even defense interceptors. Think about it, because if you rely on this system now for monitoring the air and space, well, if they can get in and even shut it down for five, 10 minutes, you are blind. For that period of time. You don't know where your satellites are. You don't know if there's inbound anything. You have absolutely no vision. Now, of course, there's going to be old tech that will most likely remain, but your main telemetry, your main eyes, let's say, are covered. And that's just simply by cyber attack, because this once again will be that single point target a lot of people will target it, just like SpaceX is currently being targeted with their Starlink. Why? Because it's the biggest thing out there. And governments are using it. It's being used in war. And that's why they're having to harden it every single day. I did a report just yesterday, I think. There was like, I think it's like 900 attempts on it per day. 900 hack attempts per day. It's just a crazy number that they're constantly having to deal with. It is being hit hard all the time. And if it wasn't for that quantum security that they have built into it, that is good for now, but also later with quantum computers, we'd be screwed, literally. Lastly, how about if there's some type of automated retaliation? That could possibly happen also. And one glitch goes and moves to another glitch or one attack ends up coming up with all of these phantom targets. And now we have escalated basically to war. Now, could that happen? Yeah, it could. Are they trying to put safeguards in for it? Probably, but will they? I don't know. Sometimes you just, sometimes the things that you see, you just have to doubt. So according to the article, they will put safeguards into place, but will they? And how safe will they be? That is the question. 
Handing over missile and launch controls to AI is not just a technical evolution. It is the ultimate gamble with human survival. Once the final safeguards of human judgment are stripped away, the world places its fate in the hands of algorithms that cannot feel fear, mercy, or regret. A single glitch, hack, or miscalculation could light the fuse on a global inferno with no one left to stop it. In that moment, humanity won't be in control. We will simply be passengers watching the countdown tick towards our own extinction.